Hey guys, welcome back to another Helix video. This is another installment in the Getting Started with Helix series. Today I'm going to be talking about snapshots, what they are, how to set them up, and how they can add tons of flexibility to your presets. So let's hop over to HX Edit and take a look. Okay, so here we are in HX Edit, and when you click on snapshot, you see you have eight snapshots. You have eight snapshots available per any preset. Uh, what a snapshot is, is basically it's a snapshot of the state of the preset. So um, let's say this is the clean, this is nothing is on but the amp and cab and reverb, you know, and we go to a next snapshot and we set it to turn on one of the drive pedals. We save that, that was maybe crunch. Then we have another snapshot, we turn on the drive, we turn on the delay, we turn on the modulation, save that, that's another snapshot. So, in the case of the last example, instead of having to hit three buttons to turn on the drive, modulation, delay, we have the snapshot set that does it all in one go. So, it, it saves you a lot of tap dancing. It allows you to save, you know, different configurations of your preset to come on, you know, to be on and off at any one time. Um, and then as we go ahead, you can also use this to change individual parameters and not just on off states. So it's very, very flexible. So let's say, um, again, this is what we want to start with. I'm going to rename these as we go. So this is cl clean. All right. I'm just going to save that. So that's our clean snapshot. Everything is just as you see it. Come here and we're going to make this our crunch snapshot. Uh, we'll make a change before I save it. So let's say we want to turn on the Minotaur and that's what's going to give us the crunch. All right. And for the third snapshot, we just want to make it, you know, lead. So we won't, let's just turn everything on. All right. So we're going to save that. Now when we're in clean, nothing is on but the amp cabin reverb. Crunch just basically turns on the Minotaur. So in that sense, you know, we're not really, um, we're only doing one pedal, so it's a one-to-one, -one, but when we go to lead now, we're actually turning four pedals on. So we're getting four pedals for one press of a foot switch. Um, and again, you can do this in any combination you want for a preset. Um, you know, just, my, you know, sky's the limit. You can set it to do whatever you want. This is a very simple preset, not a lot of blocks, but let's say if you had a preset with 15, 20, 25 blocks, I mean, I've built presets with as many as 30 blocks. Um, snapshots become very powerful at that point and being able to make drastic changes in the tone with one click of a button. So um, that's in a nutshell what snapshots are. Um, now let's get some of the finer points. One of the things that they added um, and I forget which firmware update, but not that long ago, was the snapshot bypass. Now what that means is if I turn snapshot bypass, if I uncheck that, that means that this pedal, block, whatever it is, will not be affected by snapshot changes in any way. So as an example, if you've got pedals that you don't want snapshots to touch, you just want, if you turn it on, you want it to stay on until you turn it off. It doesn't matter what snapshot you change to. That's a good way to take a, a block out of the loop to where, you know, snapshots won't affect it. Um, where that could be useful is I have a preset that's, that acts as a four channel preset with the pedal board. Um, what that means is I'm using snapshots to change amp parameters. And I'll show you in just one second how to do that. But those, that's what the snapshots are doing, and all the blocks are completely independent. So literally, the snapshots are working as like your, your uh, channel foot switch on a real amp, and the pedals are working like a pedal board. If you want something on, you click on it. You step on the switch. You know, it's a one-to-one. -one. Um, just another way of working through it, another method, and another layer of you know, flexibility where, you know, where you can, you know, if you prefer to work one way, you can set it up that way. If you prefer for everything to be controlled by snapshots, you can work that way. So, again, very simple to do that. You just use that snapshot bypass option. Now, let's say we wanted to do, like, I was just talking about like a, a pseudo channel switching kind of thing. So let's come to um, snapshot five and I'm gonna make sure everything's turned off. I'm gonna name this um, clean channel. Well, clean, that's fine. Good enough. I'm gonna save it. Now, what we wanna do is I need to tell Helix what parameters the snapshot's gonna control. 
And my last video on this, I was talking about how to assign, you know, parameters to a foot switch. This works the same way. You just right click, choose snapshots, and now you'll see it's bracketed, which means it's being controlled. And I'm just going to grab all of the amp parameters and assign them to snapshots. And basically what that's going to do is allow me to use snapshots to make any number of changes to these parameters on a per snapshot basis. Okay, so we're, you know, this is our kind of clean channel. I'm not going to bother to play through this. This is just a kind of a proof of concept. I'll show you how it works. So I'm just going to be using arbitrary numbers and settings. So I'm going to pull the master down. The drive is, is down pretty low. Um, let's say the bass is up a little higher and we've got some presence. And that's our clean channel. All right, so we'll save that. Um, now another thing I like to do, you know, if you have something that's fairly close to what you want and you just want to make some changes to it, you can actually copy, come over here, right click paste, and I'm going to rename it. We'll say this is, we'll just call this crunch. Uh, not quite enough letters to do that. Call it crunch channel. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to bump up the drive a little bit. Um, and then that's probably going to make it a little louder. So we're going to pull down the channel volume a little bit. And let's say the on this particular amp model, when you push the drive, the, the bass isn't as tight as you want. It's a little flubby or something. Um, I'm going to pull the bass down a little bit and um, maybe add a little treble. You know, again, I'm just, just showing you proof of concept. This isn't, I have no idea what that would sound like necessarily. All right, so now we're going to uh, copy this again. Come over here and we're going to paste. All right, we're going to rename. This will be our lead channel. Now, on this one, we're going to just, just crank it all. Um, now, we're going to pull the mask to channel volume back a little bit so we don't go from here to here. Although, if, if this is the lead channel, you may want it to get a little bit louder, so you just have to experiment with that. Um, one more bass out. We're going to bump the mids up so it stands out in the mix a little more. Just so being ice picky, we'll cut the treble back a little bit. Save it. So now we have, you know, a clean channel. We have a crunch channel. And we have a lead channel. So, um super flexible you have one cha one amp in your preset and now you can make it sound like you know several different amps you know w within reason you know you can't take this this us princess model is never going to sound like a dual rectifier but you can definitely make it sound like as a clean clean channel and a lead channel now going back to the snapshot bias pass let's say we want to set it up this way and if we have it on the crunch channel and we turn the delay on while we're in the crunch channel and we go to lead channel, well, we don't want the delay to turn off necessarily. We want to decide that on the fly. So going back to what I talked about earlier, uncheck the snapshot bypass. So when we're on crunch and we decide to turn delay on, we're going to, we're going to go to lead, but we don't want to lose the delay. So now the delay stays on. So again, two different ways of working. You, you know, you just experiment depending on what you're trying to accomplish, the blocks in your presets, so forth and so on. That snapshot bypass can be a pretty cool feature. Um, I tend to use it a lot. Um, you know, any parameter that you can assign can be assigned to a snapshot. So, you know, right click snapshots. If I want to change the mic model for the for the uh, cabinet, no problem. No problem at all. So, you know, that's that's an actually pretty cool feature because these mic models sound vastly, vastly different from one another. So um, I have done that before where I'll have this mic model sounds better when the amp is clean. When it's heavily driven, I like a different mic model. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, again, your imagination is really the limit. You can set this up for, for whatever you want. You have, you know, eight snapshots per preset. I find this gives me enough flexibility when I build out my live presets that I seldom have to change presets. Uh, unless there are songs that are just very, very specific in what they need, 
I can use between snapshots and stomp mode I can get there I can get just about anything I need out of it so okay so those are snapshots I hope that was helpful to you guys and getting you acquainted with the concept and how to put them into practice for your own presets is there anything you still have questions about or I might have not touched on dealing with snapshots or anything helix in general please feel free to put that in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out with that as always please like comment subscribe share all that good stuff thanks for checking out the video and for the support as always we'll see you next time